song on the show Friday. He's from The Commitments. He'll be singing and chatting, so don't miss that. Now, uh, now we have someone who's a bit further off the showbiz track than our usual selection of guests. His difficult and unusual life is about to be featured in the Screen 2 drama The Grass Arena, based on his own autobiography. Imagine, if you will, a young boy kicked out of school at the age of 14 and doomed to a life on the streets and sleeping rough. From there, a 10-year battle with alcohol and various scrapes with the law until one day, a chess game played in his prison cell changed his life. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. John Healy. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show. I've been reading The Grass Arena. It's a fascinating, fascinating life story. Um, if, we, if we, very briefly, how did you, how did you become what, what you referred to as a wino? How did you, you get from, from your childhood into be living on the streets to living rough? Well, if you're drinking heavy and uh, you keep at it, you know, if you start anything young, you get good at it. And uh, you keep sinking lower and lower. You go from the saloon bar to the public and then from the cider house and then onto the streets and into the parks. Because I'm sure, like many other people, when I've walked past and seen people and, you know, even occasionally offered the occasional quid, you, you wonder, did someone, did they make a conscious decision? Did someone say, you know, uh, I don't like the idea of society, I don't like the idea of the rules and the, and the, uh, the regulations you have to follow and I want to sort of opt out? Or, or does it always just happen that people just drift into it, do you think? Well, I don't know what they've done, but I just sort of uh, kept going lower and lower through drink and I ended up there. And uh, I never thought I'd get out of there, so I thought I'd make a good job of it. And I couldn't get rid of the drink, I was always drinking. Never see a day that I wouldn't drink, so I just got on with it. And you were you were you were living rough. You were living on the streets for a period of ten years. Hours. We were ten years in in the, in the parks, on the streets, in the grass arena, and that. Yeah. How was life on the street? I mean, is it as violent? Is it as rough as as one might think? Well, in, in them times, you got no money. You get some money now, even on the streets. But then you got no money. There was no social security for a wino, and. So if you got caught begging on the third offence, you went to the Crown Court. The sentence was between one to three years, mandatory. On the, on the next time, you went three to seven. So all winos are muggers. You become a mugger, which is a better option. And, uh, so now why is that a better option? Why, because you would be treated differently? Well, you're you turned a predate felon anyway. You're not, a wino is not an ordinary felon. You're right. turned predate felon. So y y you can pick your spot to try and get some money off of someone. But if you're begging, you have to get where there's people, you know, a lot of people, but if, you, if you're mugging, you can choose your own spot, and uh, you get, and the cops are around where, if you're begging, and so they're not around where you're trying to get it Well, if you're else. mugging, presumably, if you do see them, you don't sort of hang around quite so much, I guess, but, but obviously it's not something you would advocate, I'm sure, to the many children watching. <laughs> um, but you did mug, you were, you were a mug yourself, is that right? You had to, otherwise you just keep doing your life for begging. Why, well, why eventually... Like you, you went inside. Why eventually did you wind up in jail? Well, I, I got done for, uh, on my last sentence, for uh, drink-related violence. But, uh, and that's what I was in for. That and while you were in there, that's when you discovered chess, is that correct? Yeah, I was put in a cell one night with a, with a guy called a fox. He was a Brighton gangster and he, he used to like chess. And he was always after me to learn this game. But I didn't want to know anything. I just wanted to get out to get drink. Anyway, I'm full soul with him, so then I just took it up. Uh, and it's changed your life, didn't it? Yeah, when I took it off, the, I didn't have to give up the drink, the drink gave me up. Why is that? Now, is that because you, you, you're an addictive type of person, you needed some sort of all-consuming thing in your life? And was that something like that, that had come into it, yeah, and it's such an enjoyable process, like it's not a game really, it's like a sport and it's like a... Well, presumably playing more. chess wouldn't have the effect on your body that, that downing, you know, a few bottles of, uh, of wine would have. No, it wouldn't have that effect, but it has an effect on the brain. <laughs> but because I was going to go no. home and maybe have a couple of games this evening, I just thought I'd tell her with you. Well, it's very stressful at, at the higher levels in the tournaments. It because you did, you played professionally, did you not? Yeah. I was in the tournaments for five years, but I was too old when I started. You know, the, the champions are usually, they're playing at master level when they're in their teens. Yeah. And I was 30 when I became a champion. So it was too hard. I'm playing against, you know, junior internationals and they're, teenagers and that, and it's hard, you know, to keep on, so I thought I'd better get out of here, I don't want to go mad, you know. Yeah. And now there's a, there's a film version of your life on TV next week. Yeah. Is it, is it actually, are you pleased with, with what they've done? Well, under the time limits that they got and everything, and you're never pleased with everything, but yeah, they've done a good job, it's a difficult subject to uh, translate from a book to a film, yeah. yeah. And, and how do you support yourself now? What do, what do you do with your time and how do you earn money now? Well, I support myself on what I write, but I'm, you know, it's peanuts what I get, so yeah. I'm just on the breadline, but I've got no social security because I'm classed as a writer now, so 
Got to get on with it. So writing stroke mugging is kind of like a similar <laughs> society regards them the same way, it seems. I think so. <laughs> Listen, John, it's a pleasure meeting you, and, and I've certainly been enjoying reading your autobiography very much. I wish you luck as a writer, and thanks for coming on the show. John Healy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, John.